All right, we are recording. And in this video, we're gonna be looking at compiling firmware uh, for QMK, which for that I am on a Windows machine, but uh, using the Windows subsystem for Linux, I do have a suitable environment for compiling the firmware because Windows is on its own not. So this is the user folder with the uh, QMK firmware folder in it. So that's necessary for QMK to work. Um, and indeed setting up QMK does put that there. So let's just select it. QMK, so we can see the different commands it has. And in you know, the stuff up here, I'm sure it is important and interesting and all that. I, I haven't really looked at it. I mainly look down here at this stuff. So we're going to be doing the QMK compile right there, compiling it. Um, but I also want to mention this and this. So QMK new key map. Uh, will this work? Nope. Okay. Um, so if you want to make a new key map, I, I some different things work differently for giving you like more information on a specific command. So that's one I tried, but I can just tell you instead of having it shown. So this is what's in the QMK uh, firmware folder, and it is quite a bit here. These, by the way, all the firmwares I've already compiled. I'm just going to recompile one of them, basically. All right, and to find the, the key maps for all the different keyboards would be in this folder, keyboards. I want the 1UP keyboards folder because that's what I'm using right now is a 1UP uh, keyboards, 1UP 60 HSE, so that's a 60% ANSI layout with hot swap uh, sockets. Um, but I do also have down here, let me just do that, and NK65, and I do want to quickly show one thing. So we look in here and we're immediately in the NK65 stuff. So we got the different files there concerning it, and there's the key map folder. I haven't actually flashed that. It runs via out of the box, so I've been, been just using that. One of the keyboards though, they have multiple products. They have the HSE, that's the thing I have. The HTE, which is a slightly different layout. Um, the RGB, which I want to say that's basically, well, either, because you can solder the switches in, and when you have that freedom, you can also sometimes change the exact position of the keys, giving you the option of different layouts. Then the Super and Sweet 16s, which are both uh, macro boards. Um, but what I have right here is this. So we go in here. These are basically the defaults, default files. So let's open up this one real quick. So this is stuff that, you know, is in there and QMK needs in order to function properly, in order to know how to use the keyboard properly. So it's like identifying rows and columns. And for the most part, you would never want to mess with stuff in here. Reading it is fine. Um, especially because some things, like one thing that I cover in the written article is this. That enables every single animation for the uh, RGB lighting. Maybe I don't want all those. You can selectively turn them on and off, but knowing that it does in fact turn it on is important. And there's certain other things here as well that may prove useful. Um, and we've also got the rules. Looking here, one thing that is not here is via support. You would enable that in a rules file, but not in this one. Don't touch these. Instead, go into the key maps, and let's use test. And yes. I was not sure if this was a via enabled uh, key map or not. But this via enabled, obviously that enables it. LTO enable, uh, that I looked it up, I don't remember the name of it, should make the firmware, firmware size smaller, which is important because if it's too big, it's useless. You can't flash it. And via does make it a little bit bigger, is my understanding. Mouse keys enabled, no, is a little funny since we already have it disabled here, but I guess that's just. Like, to reinforce, you don't want to enable this because you may run out of space. Um, and then we've got the config file here, and both this rules and this config will override the contents of these. So, for example, define RGB animations. Um, I could put something in here, which, well, let's look at it. It's going to be more complicated, especially because of all that stuff. Um... <laughs> Ignore all of that. So with this, I undefine RGB light animations, so now it'll only be those animations I select, which would be these five. 
this stuff is just setting up uh, lighting layers, so like having different, um, when I activate one layer, it'll light up some of the LEDs. All that can be configured. Um, this is the pattern, the mapping of the LEDs, and then this is just for some changes there. Don't worry about that. I do talk about it in the article, but completely unimportant right now. All right, so let's say, though, you want to make a new key map. Well, you can do it one of two ways. QMK new dash key map. Um, actually, if I do this, I, I don't remember if it'll ask me, it'll just give me the... Okay, so it does ask. One up keyboards slash one up 60 HSE. So you need to do it this way because it's basically looking into the folders and the specific PCB is not that first folder. It's a layer down. The NK65, though, that is that first layer, so you're good. You don't need the slash in there, because everything is right there, that top-level folder in the keyboards folder. Now with one of keyboards, they collect all their stuff together, which is pretty helpful. There, and let's just call it test2 for now. There. So it has made it. Basically, it's just copied the default folder into a test2 folder. Um, and it tells us what the command would be to compile it right there, and I just need to refresh this. There it is. Of course, you can also just do something like this. Oop. Make copy and rename it. Something like that. That is actually what I use in the article. So one advantage to doing it this way is you come in here and you know, you're just copying, you know you have via enabled basically because you're working with via already. Um, if you just copy default, that's going to be no different than using this command. It might still be easier to just copy things over. Um, don't need that. This is kind of useful to know though. That's how you get to the uh, file system for Linux. So that is how I'm in here because th these would not normally be viewable through Windows except by basically going through the network folder. Uh, Microsoft, I think, is changing that at some point, or at least making it possible with a version of the Windows subsystem for Linux. I, I don't completely remember because I don't follow that too closely since it's all preview build stuff, but anyway. So with Via Custom, you know, this is basically already set up to just be the same as the Via stuff, but I could... There we go. It's nice when you can actually click and have it go with it have it be dragged, but this is what key map looks like, and I don't feel like changing it. There's no need to right now. can always, you know, just compile it and make those changes in VIA, and also it's if I want some of the changes, I have them right here. Um, yeah, this one will be. So like with this, I have the menu key, and that's where the, and I moved over the momentary one, so I moved it, it from here over to here, yeah, let's actually make that an uppercase L. Just to be clearer right there. Uh, menu, I think I, yeah, I made a change here by putting delete down there, toggle on layer 3 because I do use that, and yada yada yada. Lots of changes there that I made. Actually, not too many. But, uh, yeah, some changes. I don't need it to be capital. But, uh, let's say, you know, you got that key map now and you want to compile it. Well, it is as simple as typing in something like that, and I'll, I will just uh, compile the test one instead of one of the new ones, like the test two. So, I'm tying at the keyboard, which is 1up keyboards, at slash 1up60 HSE, so it knows to come to this folder, and then for the key map, I'm telling it test, and dash km for key map. Right. So, just run that. It's not always the fastest, but it's also still reasonably quick, especially when you consider I'm using... I'm trying to remember how old this laptop is now. It's fairly old. It's in a uh, Core i5-4200U processor, so that's a two-core, four-thread. It's And it's an ultrabook, so it was underpowered to begin with. So by today's standards, it's very slow. 
But uh, yeah, it just needs to do that stuff, which I do have things disabled, which helps uh, it go a bit faster. And that's right, this is via enabled. So anything you would need for that, it has enabled. But it does also the, the, that lighting layer stuff I talked about here. That, that's all right there. <laughs> it's all in the article, too. If you are curious about that, you can look there. But let's now go and find the file, which is back up here in the QMK firmware file. And because it is a one-up keyboards uh, thing, firmware, there we go, one-up keyboards, PCB, and firmware, you can just hit one, and it'll be here, it'll be that one right there, so it's keyboard name, and then the name of the firmware, .hex, because this uses .hex files, whereas the NK65 65 uses .bin. As I have it sorted by type, it puts it there. But yeah, I mean, with that, I'd basically be good. I could load up the uh, QMK toolbox, flash it, and, and be solid. That's a different video, though. Uh, I'm trying to remember if there was... Were there any other commands in QMK I wanted to mention here? Oh, yeah, yeah, that, that one actually is kind of worth it. Uh, there. No, it wouldn't be. Here they are. So this is this is a JSON file. So this I got from the QMK configurator after I made some changes, like putting in yeah. So like I moved over the mo one the uh, function key fn key, gave myself the um, the menu key. Okay, so th that is basically this key. Map. Same thing. Same exact layout on there. So, let's make that. QMK JSON to C, because notice this is a JSON file, that's a C file. And actually, no, not gonna do it that way, because that's gonna be very messy and I don't feel like typing in that much. QMK firmware, at least not having to type it in twice. Uh, slash keyboards, slash. 1up keyboard slash 1up 60 HSC, and I really, really hope I have not misspelled thing. Nope, so far all good. Key maps. So now I am in this folder, and we can confirm by doing that to list the stuff. You can see it right there. So, QMK JSON to C 1up 60. H S E dash menu underscore macro dot JSON for the output uh test two dot C and there it is. Now it's not gonna be uh, as nice, so it's not gonna have you know this in here, and it's not going to have the spacing in there to help with uh, finding the keys, but it's functionally the same. I can drop this into test 2. So let's first rename it. Keymap C. Test 2. Yes, replace. And this well, it won't be via enabled, but it will work. I'd be able to just, you know, flash on there and have the same layout as actually what I currently have as well. Though what I am using is this. This one. So I got uh, some some neat stuff here, but I do have the layer lighting. The, sorry, the lighting layers, which is a pretty neat feature. I'm glad I took the time to figure out how to do that and uh, put that all in. And that's really it for this one. It's like, showed you how to make a new key map, showed you how to compile, so showed you how to, ju how to use the JSON2C. And personally, by the way, my, my recommendation, don't use JSON2C. Not if you have, you know, a, a file like this one. Uh, you know, in the default, we've already got this stuff in here, and sometimes this, they have the spacing, sometimes they don't down here. It's like, start with this, because that way you still have this, or just copy this into here, into what you get. QMK Configurator is still great, though. Go there and plan out your layout. 
configure all that out and then you can mouse over and it will tell you oh yeah this key is this command in like the tg3 it'll tell you that and then you just you know find it in here and type it in it, it is a useful tool but personally i would rather manually edit the files and just rely on the json 2c that that's me though i know that some people would disagree but you know do whatever you're comfortable with that's the thing do whatever you're comfortable with and in case you were wondering why did i do all these change directories that the cd to get down here it's because otherwise i would have to type in that path for both the uh direction for both getting to the json file and then for the output uh, but by setting it into here, it knows to just look in here then and to save the file in here. It's a helpful thing. Yes, it's also... Let me quickly check. Oh yeah, that's right. If you don't specify an output, it just writes the file to the, to the terminal window. Not exactly ideal. Alright, that's it. So, see you next time.